Golden Retriever vs Labrador Retriever. The process of choosing a new dog to adopt is very difficult and will always come down to two breeds, and the majority of times these two breeds will be very similar to each other, sharing few to almost no differences. Welcome back to Dog Law. Today, we'll be going through a list of facts regarding the differences and similarities of two of the most popular breeds in the world, the Golden Retriever and the Labrador Retriever. If you want to know which one of the breeds is more suitable for your lifestyle, this is the video for you. Before we begin, can you answer which of these two breeds have proven to be able to detect cancer in a person by smelling it? Don't worry, we'll tell you when we're halfway there. You'll know when this text changes. As always, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications to receive more content like this. First, we want to talk a little bit about the origins. In 19th century Scotland, the wealthy Scottish elite were not happy with the breeds of dogs they used for wild fowl and needed a breed that was an efficient retrieving breed for both water and land. Retrieving from both water and land was necessary because the hunting grounds at the time were pocketed with marshy ponds and rivers. Golden Retrievers were the result of this search, resulting in the crossings carried by the founder of the breed, Lord Tweedmout, who crossed a wavy-coated retriever with a Tweed Water Spaniel. This resulted in one of the most popular dogs ever, famous for its loyalty, playful personality and pure golden coat. The Labrador was developed in the 1800s in Newfoundland, Canada, from crossing several breeds of local dogs like the St. John's Water Dog. They were bred as working water dogs, helping fishermen retrieve nets and haul gear. Their love of water and expert retrieving ability made them ideal waterfowl retrievers for hunters who brought the breed to the US and UK. We limited our history class to around one minute because the real reason you're watching this is to learn about the dogs themselves, their similarities and differences. Well, as you probably know, they're very similar looking, which is one of the main reasons many people call both of the breeds cousins. Both Golden and Labs are the perfect choice for people looking for medium to large sized dogs, and both are almost the same size, with male Golden Retrievers reaching 23 to 24 inches in height and weighing 65 to 75 pounds, females 21.5 to 22.5 inches high and 55 to 65 pounds. Almost identical, Labrador Retrievers are around the same height as well as their females, and the difference lies in the weight where male labs are between 65 and 80 pounds and females 65 to 70 pounds, proving that labs are just slightly larger than goldens. As for the colours, well, it's pretty straightforward. The golden retrievers are unshockingly golden, with some dogs showing a lighter gold than others. Labradors are accepted in three colours, black, yellow and chocolate. The black and yellow colours can vary in shading, so it's no surprise we see some yellow labs showing almost a cream white in their fur. Shedding and grooming. This can be a very important point to consider and can influence a lot on the decision of getting one of the breeds. It's said that Golden Retrievers need a lot more intensive care than the Labradors, but is this statement accurate? Well, the Golden's coat needs consistent care, but that's not different from a Lab's coat's needs. Golden Retrievers have a medium length double coat consisting of a water repellent top coat and a soft undercoat. They have longer feathering fur on the tail, legs, and neck. The undercoat grows denser in cold weather and sheds in warm weather. You would want to use an undercoat rake to help remove loose fur from the undercoat. Labs don't have the feathery furnishings on the ears, neck and tail like Golden Retrievers, so those areas will need no trimming. However, while their coat length is short, they do have a double coat that needs maintenance. Labs also require an undercoat rake to remove the dead hair from the undercoat. Both breeds shed great amounts of hair all year round. Golden Retriever hairs are longer and often paler, so it could be more problematic for owners who don't like shed hairs stuck to their furniture, clothes or even food. So, unless you have an incredibly high tolerance for dog hair during the molting season, you'll likely need to commit to daily brushing and weekly undercoat rake combing. However, for some of the year, labs require less grooming than Golden Retrievers. Since both breeds are eager to please, you won't find any trouble grooming or even bathing them, the latter being a huge plus. You'll need to do this more often than you think, because both Labs and Golden Retrievers are playful dogs who enjoy rolling around in the grass or playing in the dirt. So if you add those hobbies into a double coat and a large dog, the result can be a rather stinky and filthy one. So the point is that grooming will be a regular and perhaps daily part of your life, starting the moment you bring a Golden Retriever or a Labrador Retriever into your life. 
Finally, if we haven't been clear enough, the final advice to give is that while labs need a once-weekly brushdown, unless they're grubby, you'll benefit your golden retrievers from at least three times a week to keep that coat glossy and tangle-free. Oh look, it's time for our segment that we call Improvements of Medicine by Canine Units. Our question was, which breed has been proved to smell cancer? And the answer is, the Labradors. Thanks to their powerful noses, Labrador Retrievers have been trained to sniff out and identify the early stages of cancer. Through work with cancer cell samples, dogs can learn to smell the disease. The canine doctors can make a diagnosis by smelling a patient's breath, blood or stool. So far, the only known way to screen for early stages of ovarian cancer is by letting a lab sniff the patient. They have very high success rates. Scientists believe the labs sniff out changes in volatile organic compounds that suggest cancer. With that, we've lost count on the reasons to love dogs. OK, back to our final point on the list. Temperament. To get things straight from the beginning, we have to tell you that both of these breeds often make wonderful, loving and suitable family dogs, provided proper training and socialization are given. Both breeds are two of the most popular ones for families and also their top choices for service, detention, hunting and search and rescue dogs. However, we can't say there's no difference between them because we wouldn't be doing our job well, and it's important to get something across. These differences between them can determine if a breed is the best choice for you, but that doesn't mean that the same breed that's suitable for you is the best one suited for your friend, or your sister, or your parents. Having said that, it's important to know that Golden Retrievers have a medium energy level, which means that these dogs can roll with the daily flow of home life. If you're kind of an active person that enjoys daily exercise but also lays around on the couch a good amount of time, the Golden Retriever is perfect for you. To give you some idea, the perfect day for a Golden Retriever consists of a 30-minute walk, some time to play, learn tricks and enjoying a restful nap. Golden Retrievers are also a good choice for multi-pet homes since they get along perfectly with other animals. A negative about the Golden Retriever's temperament is that you don't want them for guard dogs because they're too friendly and will generally not be suspicious of strangers. Labs tend to be a bit more energetic than Golden Retrievers, especially when we refer to puppies or young adults. While this energy is typically expended as exuberance and enthusiasm for activity, play, work and anything else that's chewable, it can become a problem if you don't have sufficient time to spend with your lab. So, if you're prepared to spend a lot of time with your dog and you like the idea of jogging and walking with them, a Labrador is perfect for you. Both of them, like we said, are two of the smartest dog breeds out there. They enjoy the training for the direct interaction between owners and dogs that this provides. Be patient when training a Labrador because their high energy may interfere with their concentration and ability to focus. Neither of the breeds will enjoy it if you spend too much time away from them, and will become destructive if this time is excessive. So, this is for the people that'll spend most of their days at home. Having said this, Labradors can be a bit more dependent, bouncier and clingier than Golden Retrievers. The bottom line is, if you want a friend to spend hours with, work out, play and overall stay active, and if there is time, relax, the Labrador is the dog you're looking for. If you're looking for a dog to play with, walk and spend a good amount of time relaxing, but also isn't very clingy, the Golden Retriever is waiting for you. Both breeds are very similar, but the few differences there are you notice are important, especially when deciding which one you'd like to choose. But it's highly unlikely you'll make a mistake, since both these dogs will give you all of their love. That's our video for today, people. Let us know what you think and what you want us to talk about in the next one. See you next time.